Dina Dayal from Croatia also, for those who doesn't know him, will read the words from Vilapa Kusumanjali, 31, and I hope that it will give a pleasure to Radha Mohan, Gurudev, and to the whole assembly, Vaishnavas. So, so, this is a nice verse from Vilapa Kusumanjali, uh, where if you listen, you can enter into the meditation on Radhika's lotus feet and her toenails. So, I will slowly read and you visualize what was written. O Sunetre, fair-eyed girl, will I soon worship your lotus feet by carefully putting jeweled ankle bells on them and worship the petals of those lotuses your toes with your dearest toe rings Will I soon worship your waist, which is Krishna's matchless love seat with a golden sash of jingling bells? One more time, I will read the words. O Sunetre, fair-eyed girl, will I soon worship your lotus feet by carefully putting jeweled ankle bells on them? and worship the petals <coughs> of those lotuses or your toes with your dearest toe rings will I soon worship your waist which is Krishna's matchless love seat with a golden sash of jingling, jingling bells. So here, here is some footnote that um, <clears throat> uh, says that Srila Rupa Goswami states that Sri Radhika's rings are marked with her own name. And are called Vipaksha Mada Mardini, the destroyer of her rival's pride. We can just guess who wrote those names on her toenails. <laughs> of course, 
Manjaris. So following is the explanation of Anantas Babaji. <clears throat> First, Sri Raghunata has a vision in his Swarupa Vesh, and then he prays for devotional service in his external consciousness. In this way, it varies. The sadaka does not concoct his own path. And he does not want his independent conceptions. He depends on the words of the Acharyas. His prayers will be very pure when he serves the Goswami's syllables by hearing and chanting them. Each of these syllables is filled with the flavor of worship and the great eagerness with which their voices were filled when they offered their prayers. This is so beautiful. We can see how actually all the writings are powerful because they give us not just the words, but their emotions, their energy, what they had, what they put into these syllables. So especially Vilapa Kusumanjali, uh, Radharasa Sudanidi and similar, have these emotions, especially in verses when we read what the authors put inside. So, there is a merciful blessing for those who serve these syllables. <coughs> so, how it was said that we serve these syllables? We serve them by hearing and chanting them, yeah? Sri Arupa Goswami closed off his beautiful prayer named Chatu Pushpanjali with the following benediction. Anyone who recites this Chatu Pushpanjali prayer dedicating it to the Queen of Vrindavana, Sri Radhika, you know, will certainly become the object of her mercy. This is what we want, to become the object of her mercy. So we got the recipe here. <laughs> One of the many recipes, <laughs> but this one is a great one also. Radha Dasya Bhajan cannot be performed in mundane consciousness. Mundane, mundane consciousness. And it should not depend on 
on any external condition the words of the Goswamis are very powerful they will remove material consciousness and cause the heart to be absorbed in Sri Radha's devotional service. <coughs> Sri Raghunath floats into the kingdom of Leela on the waves of prayer. Tulasi worships Sri Radhika's lotus feet with ankle bells. The word abhyars, abhyarse in the text means formal worship, which usually means regular worship of the deity in the temple with incense, flowers, bath, and so on. It is quite unusual to worship with ankle bells. waist bells and toe rings but such are the ingredients of worship in the transcendental kingdom of Radha and Krishna's pastimes sometimes when Sri Radhika goes out at night to meet Krishna, Abhisara, Abhisar, yeah, she wraps her cloth around her ankle bells to stifle them because she don't want that somebody will hear as she sneaks out. Why doesn't she take them off altogether? Radhe Radhe, because before we hear the answer, <laughs> we, can, yeah, we can stop okay. so that devotees become eager for answer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and we oh, can wait. say something little bit to share. Actually, we can see here that different types of worship Baba is mentioning here. Uh, external worship and internal worship. And uh, many of us, we have experiences with this uh, external worship like a archana which is which is meant for to do it with the body but there's another type of worship and it's a bhajana and this kind of worship puja is doing with the spiritual identity to the beloved ishtadev and for this kind of puja it's necessary to fulfill one condition. You are mine and I am yours. Then bhajan can be part of worshipping with full emotions and heart. And in that moment, everything what the devotee is doing putting ankle bells, waist bells, earrings, 
preparing different foods, flowers, is actually paraphernalia for worshipping. Because his emotions are paraphernalia. <laughs> and he exactly knows which kind of emotion he has, and this kind of emotion he wants to offer Radhika, and not only to offer her, he wants to inspire her emotions to become even more intense, intense, intense. Because the purpose of worshipping is to make Ishtadev happy. And how we can make happy someone? By increasing his feelings. How? Positive feelings. <laughs> Through our feelings. So Tulasi to, to here is a perfect example of someone who has a pure feelings and she is offering her pure heart to Radhika and in that way it's one kind of perfection of worshipping. Then Baba is speaking a little bit in further that listening the words of Acharyas are also kind of worship. So ears of devotee are paraphernalia for this kind of puja. But ears, not ordinary ears, ears who are drinking the nectar of Shimati Radharani. The ears who, who always drink the sound of her voice, sound of her jingling bells, waist bells. So, devotee who is enough sensitive, he can hear, like my Baya said, he can hear and meditate on this jingling. But the first jingling is to hear the jingling, the words of Acharyas. The words of Acharyas are bringing the jingling of Radhika's nupura, ankle bells, or bracelets, or whatever. Each syllable Baba is saying here is jingling in perfect tune with Radhika's emotion. Each syllable of her maidservant, what she pronounced, is perfectly jingling in a perfect tune with Radhika's emotion and state of heart in that moment. So by properly and very attentively, we are drinking their jingling words. We are preparing our heart. So Baba is saying here, not by own concoction, but by following the jingling of the words of Acharyas. So this is the process of, uh, yeah, this is the process which we, is a very positive process, and uh, uh, this is the process which gives a hope. And there is one more thing. Through this process, we are receiving the mercy. Because they are opening this door through their words. And by listening the jingling of their words, we can hear the emotions which are jingling in their words. And by listening their emotions, we are coming in the position to be absorbed and their emotions are infused in our hearts. So this is exchange, then starts this exchange. Yeah, Dina Dayalaj, you want to share something? I'm yeah, sorry that I, I took uh -huh, you care. I wanted to say, uh, in connection with this, uh, not to have your own conco concoctions, uh, that doesn't mean you don't have your own experience because of course they are guiding us 
Acharyas are guiding us how to enter into this, how to listen, how to go into our bhajan. Uh, but everybody has their own individual experiences, just that there will be no confusion that uh, we are not allowed our own experiences, of course, because we have our own uh, unique relationship with our Ishtadev. And this is, this is normal, this is natural. So, just that somebody will not block themselves thinking, oh, I can't have my own experience. Yes, you can, but they are showing us the way, how to enter into this. And by following their footsteps in the context, how to do it, how to connect with Radha Mohan, we can more easily connect and have experience and enter into our bhajan as manjaris of Radhika. Yes. Okay, so why doesn't she take them off all together? Hmm? Yeah, what do you think? She, of course, wants to make them jingle later because why she is doing, why she is having jingles so that Krishna can hear them, you know? <laughs> but she also don't want to be caught before she comes to Krishna. So, she wants to make them jingle later. When she approaches the tree sting kunja, <coughs> so that Krishna can hear her coming. Krishna will be so eager for her to come that he stares down the road for her at every moment, always imagining that he hears her footsteps when he hears the dry leaves falling from the trees. So Krishna is so much in meditation on Radhika's jingle bells that every sound, even the falling leaves, he hears as Radhika's jingle bells. And, and watching, is that Radhika? Is Radhika coming? Where is she? <laughs> so, yeah. So these ankle bells are meant to drive him mad. <laughs> because he is so much waiting for Radhika. But, yeah. And he will become mad <laughs> until she comes. So much eager. Uh, please, mm -hmm. uh So we can s see here how Krishna is giving example to us. Mm -hmm. In which mood we should prepare ourselves in which mood we should approach Radhika with full eagerness, even if she doesn't appear yet. So the mood, Krishna is very clearly explaining here, and this mood, we call it sometimes Rati, with full anxious, with full ecstasy, the full madness, she is waiting, he is waiting, sorry, my English is 
he is waiting with full enthusiasm, ecstasy, madness. And when he hears the sound, then all his senses are become mad and become one. And just going directly to the source of that sound. So this is Rati, which Krishna also stage of love. And this stage of love, Sadaka also is practicing with his Guru. Shri Guru Charane Rati. Gurudev this morning was explaining a little bit about this in his room, how it's important to be mad for the Guru. And when person, what does it mean, Rati, madness for the Guru? It means he's my best friend, he's my best well wisher, and I. I'm not aware about anything and anyone. Although I'm not showing it externally, but deep in the heart, I only have him or her. From that rati, we can start to receive another rati. Rati strong emotions, madness for Ishtadev. So this is the path of progression, actually, and this is the path we should try to follow as much as we can. And the purpose why Anathadas Babaji is speaking in the beginning in the introduction of his commentary is to emphasize how much is important to follow Acharyas, their feelings, their thoughts, their dealings, because it will bring some madness in our existence, spiritual madness. I'm speaking about spiritual madness. And this madness will attract Ishtadev. Krishna or Radhika or Goranga is practically speaking very attracted to the madness of love of his devotee. And like my brother said, and each of us has to relish it on his own way, in his own time in different circumstances. And we can see here that after madness, real thing starts. Not before. Before is preparation. I'm very attracted to Radhika. I'm very... Oh, I became attached to Radhika. I became attached to my Guru Manjari. But now, in the mood of Rati, I'm completely crazy for my Guru Manjari. I'm completely crazy for Radhika. Then start, this is a Rati level. Then, real visions, not sh short ones, deep visions are starting to coming in the heart of devotee. And all these things are going by the Kripa. And devotee, although Shishya, disciple, is a mad, he's very, very aware from where he receives, from whose heart he receives all necessary Kripa for his further advancement. I just share with you because I heard from Gurudev this morning. So I just wanted to share with you this. 
Sorry if I took your time. No, it's very nice. And uh, I just wanted to say that the, in, uh, in this case, it's so much important with who we associate. In this case, with Gurudev and also other Acharyas, even those who are not physically anymore here, through their syllables, whatever they written. This is also Sangha association with them and also between us who are like-minded devotees these associations uh, gives fuel for this madness through one pointedness because this all goes hand in hand together so we through association are getting fuel madness to go in that way, to become more and more mad, wishing that Radhika, I want to see you, I want to be with you, I want to serve you in the best way I can, and the best uh, and in the way that you want me to serve you. So that's the point that we get the feeling and the feeling we will get with the association and association is how i said with gurudev with previous acharyas and with like-minded devotees so this is so much important because in psychology it is said that uh, uh, we are the sum of the five people we spend most time with this is sad. So, who, who we associate with, we are getting their part of their energy. We are like sponges. So, we collect, and this helps us to move. So, it's very important with who we associate on our daily basis or through life. Okay, let's let's continue. <coughs> so Krishna got, get, is getting mad because he hears every noise and thinking those are ankle bells. So these ankle bells are meant to drive him mad. Also, during intimate pastimes, they drive him mad. So they are the best possible ingredients for this formal worship. And Tulasi is the priest who performs that worship. The jeweled ankle bells are shimmering on Sri Radhika's beautiful lotus feet. Tulasi says, How will you make the rasa dance glorious without having your jingling ankle bells, ankle bells on. You have to madden your hero, don't you? Swami, Swamini shows the thoughts on her mind through her artistic dancing. The ankle bells jingle along with every gesture <coughs> she makes during the dance. The hero dances with the heroine <coughs> 
and different musical instruments make waves of sound. The bangles, waist bells, and ankle bells all resound on their limbs. The more ecstatic the gopis dance, the louder their ankle bells jingle. Shyama plays his flute and the jingling of <coughs> Swamini's ankle bells enhances the sweetness of his flute playing. Suddenly, one of the, these ankle bells falls off. So that Shyama's flute does not sound so sweet anymore. It is as if something is missing. <coughs> Shyama looks in all four directions. And then finds out that one ankle bell is missing on Swamini's feet. Shyama tucks his flute in his belt and hangs, hangs the ankle bells back on Swamini's foot with both hands. Now his flute sounds as sweet as before again. Uh -huh. Yeah. So here we can see that you know, everybody saying Krishna's fl playing flute so nicely, you know, but when it's combined with the sound of Radhika's ankle bells, it's so much better. Even Krishna immediately notices, oh, something is different. It doesn't sound anymore as it should sound. So he understands, oh, he sees actually that Radhika is missing one ankle bell and then he finds ankle bell and puts back on Radhika, Radhika's feet and they start again dancing and playing and immediately all is good sound is again there so we can see how Radhika enhances <coughs> Krishna's flute playing yeah. through her ankle bells. And again, how Manjari service helps <coughs> in this Leela. Because Manjari's put ankle bells on Radhika. And Krishna also loves this. This is one Leela where, where Krishna actually is, I will say, happy because this is his chance to touch Radhika's feet, you know, to put back the ankle bell. So he enjoys this <laughs> so much. <laughs> <laughs> if I also can say yeah. something, as I see now, so the instruments, like a flute or different different other instruments, in this case even 
ankle bells is an instrument. They're playing the music, actually, of their hearts. They're instruments in which they express their deep feelings to each other. They deep thoughts to each other. So Krishna always want to be embraced with the Radhika's feelings. And when ankle bells fell from her legs, she suddenly, he suddenly feels alone. Because he wants always to be so close with her. And through the sound of her ankle bells, he is close with her feelings. Because those ankle bells are touched by Mahabhav, and they became Mahabhav, but also they sound like a Mahabhav. <coughs> and Krishna is completely depend on the sound of Radhika's heart. He cannot even dance, he cannot even play the music if Radhika is not supporting him, like a background, giving him more and more intense feelings and inspirations. And he is Rasika Shekhar. He always wants to relish Rasa. And through this, this sound, Radhika gives him opportunity to relish the sound of her heart. If someone else wants to share, please, I, I cannot see. Ah, yes, please, Gurudev, Suniti Ji. Yeah. Yes, we are sitting here, our ears, our ears are jingling, and uh, it's very inspiring. And I, I just want to mention that Gurudev was uh, sounding very happy when it was mentioned by Baba that Tulasi Manjari is the priest of this ceremony that is happening there right now. Yeah. And I thought, what is the duty of the priest. The priest is preparing the Yakya Stali, making it happen that the fire of love can grow and grow and be stronger and stronger and that they can dance so nicely and they prepare everything and that is such a nice um, feeling to get how the mantris are so absorbed in that surati, creating the auspicious moments of their dancing, singing, meeting, that it is such a uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, description that what you all so lovely explain and thank you, uh, uh, for reading so nicely and Goranga Sundara. And I want to ask, maybe Guru, you want to share with the Tulasi, a, a priest of this ceremony, because you like it so much. Please explain it. Only one thing I want to add uh, that. Uh, <laughs> No connection. Aha. Uh -huh. No connection with Gurudev's room. Maybe internet. I don't know if other devotees are hearing us. I don't see them moving. So. Aha. Uh -huh. Let's see. Unstable. <coughs> Um, there is a question from Divya Prem. Yeah, Divya Prem. Yeah, from Rieka. From Rieka. Uh -huh. 
Maybe, maybe can, you can, can tell us the question. No, no, it, it's on Croatian. It, yeah, yeah, but Mahabawa knows. Mahabawa. It's English. English. Okay, okay, very good. Just please read. <laughs> So why why so why was it now? Why should Gurudev? Gurudev, just Gurudev, one. Gurudev, 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 please. In the moment when you start to speak, internet just broke. So we we didn't hear any words of yours. Singer cannot sing. <laughs> Uh, flute player cannot play if the rhythm is not right. Dancer cannot dance if the rhythm is not there. And this all coming, rhythm is coming from ankle bells. So flute beauty is in ankle bells. And the one is missing, so rhythm was not good, so foot playing is not good, and stepping is not good. So everything is based on what? Sri Radhika. So her anchor well is beautiful to meditate. We listen many things every day, but many things is there, so anchor bells is not coming to my ear. We have to concentrate to listen only the anchor bells of Radhika, like Krishna is anxious, mad to listen that, but she cannot hide to Krishna. So she opened her covering of anchor bells. That Krishna knows that she is here. So Krishna is teaching to the Mandiris and the friends and the Dasi of Radhika. And Radhika is teaching by his rhythm to Krishna and everyone to us. Rhythm is more important, and then singer can sing. Dancer cannot dance without freedom. You see, when they dance, they open such the tuning some rhythm. And our mind is in rhythm, means in the rhythm, then we are in tuning. And we are out of rhythm, we are not in tuning. So if we go to out of tuning, means we are not in rhythm. Yes. See? Yeah. Yes, yes, this, this, this we can see. Uh, uh, for example, when we are even singing, and if somebody is playing instrument out of the rhythm, it confuses the singer or other person who is playing other instrument. So this we can really see uh, in this case how how it works in our and in our spiritual life towards Radhika. That we if we come to us, that to see. <laughs> A spiritual life with them is coming mm -hmm. from the anchor birds of particular. Yeah, yeah. That is the point. And Krishna is anxious, waitingly, very passionate to listen that anchor bird, that he is there. Mm. That's it. <laughs> there is uh, one question. Divya Prem asks, so Gopal, please. She's asking, so why was it now? He needs a microphone. I can't hear. So uh, Divya Premadas is asking, so why was it now? 
why she couldn't take them off. I'm assuming she means the, the anklet and muffled instead to have them ready at an instant. So why couldn't she take them off? She is asking <laughs> instead of having it ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She didn't, uh, you know, she muffled them because uh, she wanted to be, that they will be immediately ready when she comes near Krishna. So she, she just removes the cloth with which is muffled and they are already ready to make a sound. That she don't have to put them there again. She is already ready. So she can immediately make the rhythm. You say to the Bethlehem to open his ankle bell and tie to again well and cover to ankle bells how much time taking to cover out or ankle bells wearing is important. It will take how much time? Here, time factor is there. They will not understand time factor and uh, limitation of time. There is very short time in our life. And in that time, we have to do it. If not, then time will miss. And to see this Radhika cup, not open it. She can say to Manjri, open my anchor well. Put anchor well. She don't want to give energy there. There is one wanted for Krishna. Well, there is not the noisy. But I have to only try to listen and converse, then you will understand. Try to be in rhythm, then you will understand. But Many things you want to listen, then not understanding is clear. Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. Uh, it's just one idea that came uh, that why didn't she take the, uh, the ankle bells off instead, uh, but she just covered them while wearing them because. Uh, when you take ankle bells off and on, then they still make some certain sound in this process of putting them on, taking them off, and putting in your pocket, and in your pocket, or whatever you have, they still jingle, you know, and, and all this process of putting on, putting off, makes some uh, strange noise. It's not rhythmical, mm -hmm. but if it's on your feet and you just cover them, it doesn't make any sound and when you just put off this cloth then you start walking and it makes perfect rhythm so there is no disturbing noises that would otherwise come if you had to put them on and take them off and then put them on again you know <laughs> that's just an idea thank you Okay, thank you all for sharing. <coughs> so, <coughs> let's continue. <coughs> so, his flute sounds as sweet as before again. Sometimes, a uh, kinkari may also put the ankle bell back while she dances and dances. While Tulasi makes Swamini relish this rasa, she puts <coughs> 
she puts the jeweled ankle bells on her feet. The practicing devotee should also have some experience while he meditates on this devotional service. The flavor of Raja is transcendental and as long as there is even a whiff of material consciousness in the heart, these realizations cannot be had. The practicing devotee should nicely follow the process of hearing <coughs> and chanting with great attachment and without committing offenses. And the more, more <coughs> and the more purified he gets, the more his heart will become like a crystal that will reflect or per perceive the rasa of Vraja. Hmm. Although we may be practicing Bhajan for a long time, Feelings of love or rati may not arise due to bad luck or because we contaminate our hearts by committing sins and offenses. So this is interesting, uh, maybe somebody can comment on this, the mention of bad luck. What does that mean? Is this some bad karma or what? What would be bad luck in context with uh, Radha Mohan? And, yeah, somebody can maybe comment. Gurudev, you want to explain this? Gurudev wants you to explain. Let you explain. Aha. Okay, Gurudev. <laughs> so first he said bad karma, uh, bad luck, and then he said. More clearly, offenses are obstacles. And when we are talking about obstacles in the form of offenses, more or less the thing is clear. But when we speak about bad luck, then we are coming to one interesting level, actually. No one can receive Kripa without Kripa. Kripa is the cause of <laughs> Kripa. And Kripa comes whenever she wants, in which time, in which form. This is completely free will of Kripa to come. And no one can force the Kripa 
to come. And if somehow it happens that person missed that Kripa, this is really bad, bad luck. It's not... Sometimes Acharyas are saying maybe some previous seed of offenses is made in who knows which lifetime. But the point is that, that Kripa is coming by his, her own will. And she is the cause of herself. And she is coming to whom and whenever she wants. And again I am saying the bad luck is the person is not heated or sprinkled with this kind of mercy. Somehow it can happen. Heated or sprinkled with sprinkled shooting. Ah, like heat with. Yeah. Heated. Yeah. With this mercy. Because ultimately, this is Sudurlaba. Hardly to attain. Is here, but in one way, it's hardly to attain because another side, we say Krishna, Radhika, Gorangani, Thai, has voluntary to give themselves to some person. And it can happen despite all endeavors. Sometimes, in very, very, very rare cases, that it's not coming. So this is a bad luck. But this bad luck will very soon become good luck. Who knows when? So Acharyas are teaching us about this aspect of Sudurlaba. Yeah. I say simple way. Yes, Gurudev, please. Uh, Always. I can take you listen. I don't listen. Yes, Gurudev. Acharya station. Acharya is telling you listen. Why listening? Gurudev. Because my. Ah. Mike, your microphone, please. Can you Radha. take in your hands? Ah, Radha, Radha. Perfect. Now is okay. Perfect, Gurudev. Acharyas are telling, listen. We are not ready to listen. Mm. <laughs> listen, my words. We don't want to listen. We want to listen something else. When we have only one desire to listen, listening, why not reading? You know, there is a difference between listening and reading. If you read, you cut many subjects. Oh, I know this. I like this. It was not like this before. Doubts will come. But when we listen, it's so much flowing that you have to keep your mind to listen. When we will listen, my mind will slowly, slowly try to not talk, talking, telling, listening. Receiving. Receiving. I receive. Because my garbage is too, too full, I want to receive to throw out the garbage. 
and why we are chanting to throw out our false ego. My false ego is too high, I cannot like to chant. Check, why not you are chanting? Because the false ego. <coughs> you have a time, but you don't want to chant because you are false ego. You are totally in body consciousness. So how can Rupa will enter? I'm not listening, I'm not chanting. And I, if somebody said, then I'm not ready to listen, I want to say something. <laughs> How Kirpa will intercede me? Kirpa can enter only by my ears. Ears. <coughs> Savana is the first. Why Savana means listen? Not talk. It's not talking is mentioned. Listening is mentioned. Rather, so Kripa is a base to enter by listening and chanting. Then our <coughs> mind becomes relaxed. Chanting will bring out the false ego. <clears throat> when the false ego is not there, it's easy to enter. My false ego is there. I want to say something. So I see that false ego. And to become greedy for Kripa, Lava Matra Sadhu Sangha Savasuddhiya. Lava Matra, not a 10 years taking. Only when I will be greedy, I will only greedy to uh, lift an ankle belt. If the Kripa is there, then we don't need to listen to any other thing. Only Krishna is a greedy for Ankara Bharata. Manjiri is greedy for Ankara Bharata. If you want to be Krishna, you can be Krishna, no problem. And if you want to be a Manjiri, you can be Manjiri. What you want, you decide. But only two can listen. And who is greedy, they listen. Like a gopi come to the Maharaj, they listen also. They can listen the truth. Who is the close, they can listen. How who is far, they will never listen. So the servant is so important, you start listening by listening. Understanding is become clear. Because you are listening, you know? Yeah. That on and on with goes, then you can see this, all this stuff is A and B, Shravan and Bhajan. If this is happening, everything will go smooth. And Kepa will flow and flow and flow. <coughs> Radhe, Radhe, thank you, Gurudev. Thank you. So, uh, actually, what you mentioned is now written in the next part. It's saying, Bhajan is the means and the goal. We do bhajan to attain only more bhajan. Yeah. Shri Narottam Das Thakur sings when bhajan is ripe 
It is called Prema Bhakti. And when it is unripe, it is called Sadhana. <laughs> this is the essential definition of devotion. How wonderfully Srila Raghunath Das Goswami was fixed in his bhajan. <coughs> he, was, he was always floating in an ocean of uninterrupted meditation on the Rasika pastimes of the Yugala Kishore. Raghunata's discipline yes Raghunata's discipline was like the line carved in a stone. While she, Tulasi, makes Swamini dive in the ocean of Shyamarasa, Tulasi puts the jeweled ankle bells on, calling her Sunetri, beautiful eyed girl. Seeing the wonderful, blooming beauty of her eyes. The eye that sees Krishna is a Sunayana, a good eye. But the gopis will never call that eye that does not see Krishna a beautiful eye. So they will not call that eye a beautiful eye. Rather, they will curse such an eye. So it was written in Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Lila. Krishna's moonlike face is the abode of his nectarian flute song and the birthplace of natural nectarian beauty. What is the use of that eye that does not see him. <clears throat> Let a thunderbolt fall on it. The gopis cannot imagine that there can be any other use of the eye than seeing Krishna. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, they say in Srimad Bhagavata, we do not know of any other or greater 
fruit for the eyes. Tulasi serves Swamini by crystallizing Shyama before her with her Rasika descriptions. <laughs> Then Tulasi puts sweetly jingling toe rings. So we can see that even toe rings are jingling. So she puts swingly, uh, uh, sweetly jingling toe rings on Srimati's lovely toes calling them Preshta, dearly beloved, and thinking, aha, uh -huh, how fortunate are these toadings. What if I could always stay on Swamini's sweet Lotus feet, like that. Who would not feel fulfilled by always staying on these lotus feet? Srila Narottam Das Thakur sings. Oh, I will go to the abode of the king of Raja, Vrindavana, and become the ankle bell of a gopi, jingling ever so sweet <coughs> on her lotus foot. Rade, mm -hmm. we can see here the differences between Saki Bhav and Manjari Bhav. For, for Gopis, the, the boat of Nectarian flute song is a Krishna's moon like face because they are completely in love with Krishna and their hearts are completely focused on Krishna. And for them, he is the source of this nectarian flute song. But from the perspective of Manjari Baba, the source of nectarian sound of flute song Ashimati Radhika, or even her ankle bell. So this is the two bhavas. And when we were reading how ankle bell fell down, this is perspective of Manjaris who are sitting aside or standing aside and just watching what will happen. And maybe... Oh, yeah. Proud of you. Proud of you. Nothing to be proud of. Yeah. 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 So, this is different perspectives. And in different books, is more prominent this kind of lilas. And sometimes we are not aware from which point the author is writing because from which point he was seeing the Lila. And when Krishna put himself the ankle bells around Radhika, Sakis didn't even saw that. They didn't hear interruption in the rhythm. 
only who hears are the manjaris and Krishna. So this is hidden parakya bhava in all lilas and each person in his own bhava is feeling hearing and seeing perceiving this lila and here it just came to me you know that krishna's moonlike face is the boat of nectarian flute song i don't like this description <laughs> I mean, I like it, but I'm not attached to this inscription. No. What is the use of the eye that doesn't see him? What is the use of the eye which don't see Radhika? Hmm. What is the use? Let thunderbolt fall on, a, on me. <laughs> So this is different approaches from different balas. Yeah, we can, we can see also that uh, uh, when this apple bell falls off, sometimes Krishna puts, yeah, but sometimes Manjari. Yeah. So it's not always that Krishna puts, but sometimes Manjari puts quickly so that the Lila will go on. Because sometimes Krishna, and this, this we know from other stories, sometimes Krishna can be very nervous to put something on Radhika. Like when he tries to put makeup and Radhika gets angry because he, his hands are shaking. So she says to some manjari, you put. <laughs> he can't. <laughs> yeah. So in this case... Sometimes Manjari puts the ankle bell. Again, how good it says, time is of the essence. You need to save the time <laughs> that the Lila will continue. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, just I'll repeat from Narottam Das Thakur. Oh, I will go to the abode of the king of Raja, Vrindavana, and become the ankle bell of a gopi, jingling ever so sweet on her lotus feet. These toe rings are also the greatest paraphernalia of worship. Because they can illuminate the sweet beauty of Swamini's lotus feet. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti writes in his Krishna Bhavanamrita, <laughs> sweetness itself rolled at Sri Radhika's feet to make itself successful in different ways, appearing as her foot ornaments and engaging other fortunate souls in praising her gl glories. Yeah, this is so sweet, so I will read one more time. Ah, by making, sorry, I didn't finish. By making sound like Rana Rana. Uh -huh. Yeah. So making sound like. Rade? 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 Yeah. What is the book? <laughs> the book is called Krishna Bhavanamrita. Uh, see this? Again, say loudly. What is the name of the book? Krishna, so the name of the book is Krishna Bhavanamrita. 
means feeling of Krishna. Yes. This is meaning of that. And why Radha's details is there? Hmm. Why Radha details, Krishna details has to to uh, written there, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> this <laughs> Mahajan <Yeah>, say <laughs> this is Krishna Bhavna Mita, Bhava Mita, Bhava Mita in the lotus feet of Radha. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, but we, we learn that Krishna is Madhuram, sweet, you know, and here says that sweetness itself rolled at oh. Sri Radhika's feet. Yes, yes, Sri Radhika. Yeah. So. When this understanding comes in life, then we know Krishna Tattva Vetta. Sai Guru. Hmm. Krishna Tattva is something else. <laughs> this makes Krishna. This makes Krishna sweet. This rolling on Radhika's feet, that makes Krishna sweet. This is the point we have to understand. Hmm. The rhythm of the jingle. Also. One is one is the past time jingling, but the Krishna sweetness is because he understands the energy of Krishna is there. So Krishna is half without his energy. So what he wants only his energy back. Good night. <laughs> That's the point. Alladani Shakti mm. is Allah means inner happiness. He is missing that inner happiness mm. without her. The Creator, Supreme Creator, also missed something. And this is his energy missing. <laughs> Not so easy to understand that the the creator is missing something. No good. <laughs> but this makes him so sweet. Otherwise, he is only creator. But this. What's heißt the uh, Longing. This longing uh, to this her. Longing. Longing. Longing means greedy. That makes him sweet. Oh, Thank you. Very nice. Beautiful. So, thank you. All set. <laughs> you are. Read more. Read more. I want to listen again and again what you are reading. <laughs> so it's continuing. Oh, sweetness again. Uh, this sweetness again, huh? Mm. Okay. It says sweetness itself rolled at Shiradika's feet to make oh. itself successful. In different ways. Hmm. Appearing as her foot ornaments and engaging other fortunate souls in praising her glories. This is the reason because we have to was heißt uh, Zuflucht suchen? Take shelter on her lotus feet. Mm. This is what you read now. Because of this, we can searching for this lotus feet. Take shelter on it. Even the Krishna took shelter of Radhika lotus feet. Yeah. <laughs> He's telling. We can get out of prison. No, in part. 
You can become atheist, but you cannot live without love. Mm. Soul cannot live without love. You can be atheist, no God will come to say, change you. But you, any living soul, human, animals, birds, creation, cannot live without love. Just as wealthy people almost always have a festivity at their homes, the very wealthy Cupid also made a jeweled gate in the form of the bells that hang from Sri Radhika's buttocks <laughs> in front of his own house to perform his endless festival. Prema Pujarini, the priest of love, or Tulasi, how sweet name gives. Prema Pujarini, Tulasi, hangs a belt with bells on Swamini's hips and says, I want to see Shyama going mad from the jingling of your jeweled sash of bells when you turn and swing during the rasa dance with your matchless buttocks. All his heart's attachments are in your hips. It is the incomparable seat of his love. Swamini's beautiful eyes are startled when she hears Tulasi speaking about Kamsari. She anxiously looks at Tulasi's face with some fear in her eyes. Tulasi says, there's no need to be afraid. This powerful hero who is able to kill Kamsa is now completely captured by the beauty of your buttocks. <laughs> There's no comparison to them and to him. <laughs> Hearing the word Kamsari, Sri Radhika thinks, Has he come? Shirasika Chandra Das sings. Listen, O fair eyed Radhe, I will hang golden ankle bells 
<coughs> on your beautiful crimson lotus feet. As soon as they move, they will inundate Shyama's mind with their ever so sweet jingling. I will put ornaments, rings on your toes that are like the petals of your lotus feet. And I will, I will beautify your thin waist that is the seat of Shri Krishna's love with a sash of bells. So let's read just the verse. Yeah? O Sunetre, fair-eyed girl, will I soon worship your lotus feet by carefully putting jeweled ankle bells on them and worship the petals of those lotuses, your toes, with your dearest toe rings. Will I soon worship your waist, which is Krishna's matchless love seat, with a golden sash of jingling bells? Jai Shri Radhe. Jai Shri Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Radhe. Можно ли я so, devotees, thank you very much for your support, for uh, also taking the time to be with all of us. So, tomorrow is uh, another Zoom. Honestly, to say we have Zoom, two, three Zooms even <laughs> each day uh, in completely different times. But uh, just to shortly to say you and to inform you uh, how much active is Munger Mandir here. But, and this activity is just one part and partial of all activities which are going constantly in Munger Mandir. So, Rade Rade, we love you.